welcome back friends welcome to another video lecture from Shomu's biology we're talking about immunology video lectures in the series of videos and in this video we'll be talking about the cytotoxic T cell activity and uh, cell killing by cytotoxic T cells you know in the last video we talked about the major histocompatibility complex 1 and 2 we also talk about uh, the antigen presenting cells and their function but we know that immune system cells have two important functions to do. One is to bring some more immune cells to boost up the immunity so that the both mode of immune system which is cellular mode of immune system as well as the humoral mode of immune system can carry out both at the simultaneously or same time so that uh, the protection uh, can be made properly against a pathogen. But in case of some situations when some of the uh, some of our body cells are infected or in infected by some viruses or by some any means it gets damaged the cell is no way is going to be fixed by the normal processes in those situations those body cells should be killed that is the idea of our own body that if the cell is destroyed if it's invaded by viruses there's no way that we can keep that cell for example look at here this is a normal body cell now red particles are viruses which invading the cell and infecting the cell and this cell is going to be dead either way because the viral particle will be killing the cell and released outside so the only way to to stop and prevent this whole process to be spread is to kill this cell because this this cell is the home for the viruses if we kill these cells then virus particle will get no room to stay so they will not spread so in those conditions we use cytotoxic T cells which are also known as CD8 uh, recognized T cells or CD8 carrying T cells and they will interact with the MHC class 1 that will be uh, provided by the infected or infected cell or the target cell. They will interact uh, with the help of engagement as well as some other cluster of designation engagement that will activate the cytotoxic T cell and cytotoxic T cell start releasing some chemical factors uh, like perforins and granzymes they will ultimately go and kill the target cell now in this video I'm going to talk about the detailed mechanism of how exactly a cytotoxic T cell is killing the target cell now the cytotoxic T cell is actually turning on the apoptotic pathway or programmed cell death pathway that is normally found in all our eukaryotic body cells so let's look at here the whole process we have this cytotoxic T cells and this cytotoxic T cell have different granules produced and those granules are filled with other components rich components let's say this is the these are all they have a uh, they have a scaffolding protein that holds two molecules together one these red molecules known as the granzymes and these green molecules known as perforins ok so it has perforins and granzymes in it now what happens normally when this cytotoxic T cell is normally present uh, the, the rearrangement let me draw the rearrangement normally let's say this is the cytotoxic cell this is the nucleus and this is the Golgi apparatus and all those vesicles and stuff present like that and it has also the T cell receptor okay this is CD plus 8 T cell it's also known as TC cytotoxic now whenever it's engaging in interaction with the damaged cell or the viral infected cell or tumor cell whatever kind of cell we're talking about and the interaction with the help of MHC so let me draw this MHC complex here this is MHC complex and let's say the fragment of antigen is showcased so whenever they engage with a proper interaction with MHC class 1 in that case th when the engagement is done properly then there is a cytoskeleton rearrangement take place in the T cell now normally there is a center known as MTOC or microtubule organizing cent center that is present here which is nothing but the centrioles and all those uh, microtubules start to originate from there that is normally present but whenever they, they have a proper interaction with the MHC coming from a infected cell 
this MTOC start to rearrange the cytoskeleton of the cell. And when they start rearranging the cytoskeleton, the Golgi apparatus will be rearranged, so as all the vesicles. Everything will be placed in a line, so that the secretory pathway of our protein can be conducted. So normally, these T cells, they don't have a secretory protein conducted, or they are not secretory ready cells. But whenever they have a proper interaction with MHC1, then this microtubule organizing center arranges the cytoskeleton and they will bring all those Golgi apparatus and vesicles in proper line so that now they are ready for a secretory pathway. And all those vesicles, now they are filled with perforins and granzymes. So let me write all those three components here. We have perforin, we have granzyme and we have surglycine. Surglycine is the scaffolding protein that we are seeing here, which is holding the structure together, this blue thing. The granzymes are these red, red dots and perforins here are these green dots. Okay? So now, let us see here the structure, if I, if I draw it correctly, let me, this is the T cell receptor, they engage with the T cell receptor with the nearby cell. This is the infected cell, I'm drawing it again, and it loads all those components here. The proper interaction, interaction and engagement is done. Up, upon this proper engagement, the rearrangement is take place, and slowly, this vesicle that are filled with perforins and granzymes will be fused with the membrane of the T cell. Whenever it is fused with the membrane of T cell, these components will slowly start to come out and those component will will be near to the cell the target cell and this perforins or green dots perforins will start creating pores in the target cell the job of perforins is to create the pores in the target cell and whenever they create the pore and the pore is ready so the target cell is a kind of punched holes then all those granzymes will be released and granzymes will take entry inside the cell. Okay? That is the process. And when the granzyme is inside the cell, it conducts two different processes. So now, I will explain this process here. This is the target cell and this is let us say the nucleus of the target cell. In the nucleus, we have genes or DNA. Just let me draw a simple drawing of the DNA that is present over there. The nucleotides, uh, the nucleic acid sequences are there. This is the nucleus. This is the cell. Now, these are the mitochondria that are also present throughout the cell. So, let me draw the mitochondria. Okay. These are the mitochondrial structures. Let us say this is the mitochondria that are present. Now, <coughs> when these granzymes are inside the cell, it mediates two different pathway. One is that it cleaves a molecule known as bead. It break bead down into fragments. Whenever it breaks beads down, the fragmentized or truncated bead, or I write it T bead, truncated bead is going to interact and attach to the mitochondrial membrane. It is going to create the pore. And that will allow cytochrome C, sorry, cytochrome C to come out from the mitochondrial matrix into the cytosol. Okay? That is one job. Cleave of the B, bead, truncated bead will go, allow cytochrome C to come out. And this cytochrome C will ultimately destroy the cell by the mitochondrial pathway, mitochondrial pathway of apoptosis. If you do not know about this in details, you can watch in my channel, there is a video about the mitochondrial pathway of apoptosis separately. But it actually cause the imbalance and the cell will be dead, cell will be killed. And the second thing is this granzyme variety, there are granzyme A, granzyme B, the variety granzyme B is going to activate or procaspase 3. So this is going to activate procaspase 3. Once it activates procaspase 3, 
this procaspase will degrade i cad this i cad is the inhibitor of caspase activated dnas so let me write cad is caspase activated dnas so what is going on there is that normally i cad is preventing this dnas enzyme this dnas enzyme to be active so dnas enzyme is present inside the cell remember dnas enzyme is present inside the cell actually it's inside the nucleus and it's present inside the cell but it's not active because it's being inhibited by another protein known as i cad so that's why there is no destruction of the dna in normal situations but when this granzyme b activates procaspase 3 procaspase 3 degrades i cad so as procaspase 3 degrades i cad dna gets free which is known as cad caspase activated dna it gets free now this caspase activated dna or cad will take entry into the nucleus and they'll start degrading dna inside the nucleus they'll break down nucleic acids that's why it's known as the dnas they can break down dna okay it's an endonuclease so it will start breaking down dna components now as the dna is degraded inside the cell there is no way the cell is going to survive this is the overall pathway of how exactly cytotoxic t cell ultimately leads to the cell death but this pathway is also very important because in this pathway if there is a cell which is tumorous which is which there is a tendency to go to malignancy or if a cell is infected by let's say hiv which is a dangerous virus in those cases t cell can kill all those target cells so that the damage could be limited and can be prevented then and there that is the purpose of cytotoxic T cell mediated killing and major histocompatibility complex 1 or MHC1 plays a vital role in this whole pathway okay so remember this that in a sense is a process of T cell mediated killing so if you like this video please hit the like button subscribe to my channel and share this video with your friends thank you